Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the third video on making a multiplayer FPS in Unity. In this video we're going to be putting aside making the character for a bit to focus on networking. So we'll finally add some networking functionality to our game. That means that we'll set up a network manager and instantiate a player prefab into a networked scene. And we'll also talk a bit about local player authority and those kind of concepts. And I'll making, be making a short presentation on how UNet actually works in terms of programming and uh, how clients connect to a server and all that kind of stuff. So uh, before we get started, I quickly want to mention that I've now added the multiplayer FPS tutorial uh, project to GitHub. So if you want to uh, download any of um, the files or the entire project, you can go here. Links, is, uh, links are in the description. And if you want to uh, have the exact version that I'm currently on or a previous uh, version, you can go under commits here and I'll try and name these, these according uh, to the video. So uh, there should be a version saying uh, video 3, video 4, and, and so on. And uh, the, there is also a test branch that you can use if you want to see what I'm working on for future videos. Also, I've gone ahead and completely redone uh, the donate system. I thought it was really bad before. And a lot of you guys have said that you wanted a better way uh, to kind of support the videos. So you can go to brekkies.com slash donate and fill out the forms here if you want to make a donation. It truly helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, so thanks a lot. And uh, let's dive into today's video. So let me start by explaining a bit about how UNIT actually works. So I've made this model here that displays uh, kind of how UNIT is split up into two APIs, application programming interfaces. The first one is the high level API, and this is what we are going to be using. Uh, this provides a bunch of classes and methods that we are going to uh, be using to apply networking to our game. The high level API HL API is built on top of what is called the transport layer. This is, this is much more bare bones and low level, and this takes care of a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. So the transport layer can be directly accessed, but that's not something we are going to be doing. And basically, this takes care, uh, the high level API uh, connects to the transport layer and takes care of stuff like distributed object management and state, state synchronization along with a lot of uh, other stuff like message queues and all that. So if that sounds very technical to you, well, then you're in luck because that's not something we need to care about uh, in our instance. So the transport layer gives great control, uh, but it's also very technical and therefore uh, will be fine off uh, by using uh, the HL API. So on top of the HL API, Unity has gone ahead and made some components for us. Uh, for example, we have the network manager, the network identity, the network transform component, and uh, a bunch of others. And these are basically suggestions by Unity of how you could implement the HL API in your game. So these do a, a lot of, of stuff for us, and uh, they are going to be need to uh, be customized uh, in some kind of way. So uh, basically what we're going to be doing later, not in this video, is we're going to override or extend these components to create our own custom scripts uh, that has exactly the functionality that we're going to be needing. We might add on to these components or uh, decide to do stuff in a different way that makes more sense. Uh, but basically these don't need to be used at all. You can create a game uh, a multiplayer game by only scripting uh, or making your own components that communicate with the HL API. So uh, that's kind of how uh, the uh, UNET uh, programming functions. And uh, basically, uh, if we take a look at how the uh, networking in Unity actually works, well, UNET is based off of the principle that one of the clients, meaning one of the players, is the host. So uh, you, you have seen this in a lot of games. For example, uh, Call of Duty uses this principle of naming one of the clients the host. And if that client's, the client then leaves, another client becomes the host. Uh, so this uh, is a pretty neat way of doing things because basically we have this uh, client here called the local client because that's part of the host. Uh, 
and we have also the server sitting on the same machine. And uh, this machine then has an IP address and uh, here I've just used a sample IP address. This is what a, uh, an IP address could look like. And then all of the clients or all of the other players that want to connect to this host, well, they basically connect to that IP address to the server which then connects locally to that client if needed. So let's say that this client wants to shoot this client. Well, he connects to the IP address, to the server, and the server connects back to that client. So if this client needed to connect to this client, well, he maybe shoot that client by going to the IP address, going through the server, and then the server will talk to the client here. So everything goes through the server, which sits on the host's machine. Cool. So now that you have this understanding, I might present to you a problem. Because, uh, well, a lot of modern games don't use this kind of IP address. You don't want to be uh, typing in an IP address every time you want to connect to a player. I mean, if you want to play over the internet, uh, you want some kind of uh, matchmaking system. And when using this kind of setup, uh, we have some issues with firewall preventing connections and all that. So to solve this, Unity has created uh, a matchmaking service uh, which is called the Unity Relay Server. And uh, here, all of the clients connect to a server that is hosted by Unity, which then communicates to the host. And that means that Unity takes care of IP matching, and it solves issues with firewall and NAT configurations. And uh, you don't need to know exactly what this uh, means and how it's solved, but just know that we won't have any issues with connecting that will have to be solved uh, by the clients. They can just connect. And this is not something we are going to be integrating today. It is something I hope to integrate in a later video. Uh, but basically, Unity hasn't uh, released uh, or announced what the prices on using this will be. A, a very common thing to do is have a limit on the number of concurrent users that uh, you can have on this system uh, before you need to pay. But Unity hasn't released any uh, information on this, so I won't go ahead and, and, and say anything yet about what this will cost uh, and uh, how many users you can have for free, if any. So we'll see about that. But for now, let's focus on setting up some networking locally on this machine. So the first thing that we are going to be doing here is adding the central networking component uh, by Unity. So let's create an empty game object over here and let's uh, call this uh, the network manager. And uh, that's without a T. Let's reset the transform on this and just drag it to the top of the hierarchy there. Let's go ahead and hit an uh, add component here and let's add the network manager. That's the one. And this basically is a component made by Unity that can do a bunch of different stuff. Well, it sets up the scene here uh, to uh, do networking. And uh, you, you have a bunch of uh, different info here on uh, how you want this set up. And for now, we can ignore this. Uh, and you also have the ability to use this component for spawning in players. So you can add a player prefab here, which is what we are going to be doing. So we have this a network manager and we also have a network manager HUD. And what this does is right now when we hit play, we see that, well, nothing has really happened and we just have this player and he's not on a network in any way. So let's just go ahead and drag this player into a prefab and then delete him from the scene. And uh, now let's look at the network manager. Well, basically, we need some way of interfacing with the network manager script. And Unity has created this component that we can use while testing called the network manager HUD. So this creates a head up display uh, and you can enable it and disable it here. And you can also play with the offset if you want it uh, someplace else on the screen. And this will just give us uh, some uh, some uh, a UI uh, that will allow us to uh, connect uh, using the network manager.
But we need to add a camera here, uh, which will show the scene when we are not playing. So uh, when we don't have a, a player yet, and we are in kind of the lobby, where we want to choose what we want to uh, connect to, well then we want to have some kind of camera that just uh, views our level. So let's right click here and hit create uh, camera. Let's uh, reset the transform on this. And uh, let's uh, rename this to maybe scene camera. Let's also make this the default camera. So let's, let's tag this as main camera. And uh, let's drag it up and out. Uh, maybe up some more. And let's rotate it down to view our scene. And uh, I'll just switch uh, to global up here. And uh, that looks okay. Whoops, I screwed up the rotation here. So that's zero, zero, zero. And then rotate it down on the X. Something like that. And you can see in the game view here how that looks. And I think that's going to be fine uh, for now. I might drag it up a bit more and then rotate it along the Y. And I think that looks just fine. And you can see here that our skybox looks very boring here. So let's change this from skybox to solid color. And let's just uh, make this some kind of gray or uh, deep blue here. Just temporarily at least. We'll make it look some like uh, that. It's going to be fine and this looks a bit uh, washed out but we'll have a look at, at creating some uh, more awesome graphics later. And uh, we want an audio listener and all of that on this component. So now that we have that here uh, and uh, we save the scene here and hit play, you can see that uh, this um, the Network Manager HUD is now displayed here and we can choose to either uh, cr create an, a, a host here or join as a client and then we specify an e IP address and local, local host here is just um, and the name of a certain IP address, meaning on the local uh, system. And uh, you can also choose server only, uh, which we are not going to be messing with uh, right now. So, and you can see here, we can enable the matchmaker. We'll get into all of that stuff. So, now that we have that, we can uh, create, uh, select LAN host here, but it says that we have to add a player prefab. So let's go ahead and do that. So inside of our network manager, we have this spawn info tab and uh, we have this player prefab slot. So let's go ahead and uh, drag in our player and it will give us an error here. It will say that the player prefab must have a network identity. So this is another component created by Unity. And uh, the network identity is a component that we add to all networked objects in our scene. So stuff that we want to communicate on the network in any way are going to need a network identity component. So we add that and it has two uh, toggles here. The first one is server only. We don't want that because we are going to control this player. So we want it to sit on the uh, local client. And then we have local player authority. And this makes sense for us because we are uh, controlling the player locally on our system and then we are sending the movement information and other stuff out through the server to the other clients so they can update it on their systems and therefore we want to check this local player authority because we have the authority of the movement locally and then we send it out through the network cool so we can clear the console there and that's basically all that we need to add in order to add it to the network manager slot. So we'll just drag it in there under the player prefab and we'll uh, have auto uh, create player prefab. And um, we have the ability to specify where we want the uh, player to be created because right now it's just gonna be created on this 000, zero, zero mic. Uh, so in the middle of our scene. So let's instead add a few uh, objects or at least two uh, for where our player will be spawned. So let's uh, create an empty object here and uh, let's uh, name this spawn point. And uh, let's just uh, add a component to this. And uh, if we search network here, we find the network start position. And that's just the only, com that's the only component that we need to add. And let's also create a gizmo for this. So let's just select an icon here and maybe make that blue. 
And you can see now that it says spawn point here. So uh, we'll just have it sit on uh, 0, 0, 0, then uh, set the Y to 1 because we want him to spawn a bit up in the air. And um, let's the uh, blue arrow here is probably the way that the player is going to be facing. So let's uh, give this an X amount, uh, or I'm sorry, a Z amount of uh, negative five. Duplicate this, rename this to spawn point two, and let's rename this to spawn point one. And maybe just drag this down so they're right by each other. And we can maybe actually make them a child of the network manager. So spawn point two here, we are going to set the Z to five and we are going to rotate him 180 degrees uh, on the Y. Whoops. And uh, if we change this to local, you can see how that uh, worked. So now these two uh, objects are facing each other uh, and they are 10 units. Uh, they have a distance of 10 units. So this way um, we can go into our network manager and we can change the player spawn method to round robin and this will basically uh, first choose one of the spawn points and then uh, the next player that creates uh, will just uh, choose the next spawn point and the next one and then loop uh, so when we only have two this will make sure that we will switch between the two uh, which is pretty uh, cool because then we will also uh, always spawn uh, opposite of each other cool uh, so now that we have this in place, uh, we can go ahead and hit play on this and we can select LAN host and we are spawned into the scene. But uh, we get a, a small warning here saying that there are two audio listeners in the scene and that's because our scene camera is still active. And if we were to go ahead and try and uh, build this and uh, let's actually do that now, uh, there will be a couple of issues. So. Uh, if we go to uh, File, Build Settings, and just add in our main level into the uh, builds list here. And one second, my phone is going off, so I'll just uh, turn that off. So we add this to the list. And uh, now basically we have to select the target platform. I'm going to build for Windows. Uh, 86 and development build is fine. And uh, then we can hit Build and Run. And we can choose some place to build it. You can see I've made a test build here already. But basically, I've gone into my project folder, created a folder called builds, and just named this one build1. Now hit save on that, hit yes to uh, replace it. And uh, it's just going to build here and it should go pretty quickly. And uh, once it's done, it's going to open up uh, the window here. I'm just going to select windowed and maybe a bit smaller of a client here and then hit play. And we get this window and uh, now we can hit play in the Z in the unity here and these basically represent each uh, or two different players or two different computers or clients that want to play with each other so on the first one here in unity we can select host and we get dropped into the scene and here we can select client and you can see now that we are facing each other and this actually it was rotated uh, wrongly but we are standing opposite of each other and uh, staring down each other's barrel and uh, that's awesome however uh, you can see in unity right now it's complaining that uh, there are three audio listeners in the scene and that's because we have on this local client here uh, we have both a, uh, a camera on the one player a camera on the other player and the scene camera and there's another issue with this, and that is that the player motor and controller is enabled for both the players on both the systems. So when I go ahead and move here, you can see that the other player is moving too. So both players are responding to input. And uh, that's of course something we need to take care of. But there's one more issue, because if we go in here, neither of the players have moved. So, what is going wrong here? Well, basically, we need to uh, kind of disable the components that uh, sit on the other objects, meaning uh, the ones that are not controlled by uh, the system, uh, so that we don't affect other clients uh, when, uh, with our input. And also, we need to kind of network 
uh, how the movement should go. So we need to add some kind of component that will uh, transmit our position and rotation uh, over the network. So there's a bunch of stuff we need to do here. And in order to kind of set this up, we create a script. Uh, let's call this the player setup script. So under the player here, we'll add the uh, player setup new script. And let's just make that of type C sharp. And in this script, if we double click it to open it up in Visual Studio, um, basically we are going to be creating uh, some lists for objects and components that we want to disable uh, when uh, they uh, for all other um, players in the scene uh, than the one that we control. So um, I hope that you can follow me on this. So let's just uh, remove the using system collections namespace. We are not going to be needing that. And then uh, let's just uh, remove uh, these two methods for now. So let's start by creating a list of components that we want to disable. So uh, let's make this an array. So all components in Unity uh, derive from behavior. So if we want to kind of make this very general, we could make the uh, a reference to the player motor, the player controller in each of their variable and then disable them. Uh, but I'm just gonna create this array so we can just add in any kind of component and don't need to add anything to the script each time. So let's make a behavior here and that's gonna be an array. And let's uh, call this our um, components to disable. And uh, let's close that off. And then in our start method, basically what we want to do here uh, is we want to check if we are in the network uh, or if we are the local player. So in order to do this, we need to access Unity networking. So first off, we need to include the namespace up here. We need to uh, be using unityengine.networking and all of the uh, high level API sits within this namespace. But we also need to derive from network behavior. So this will allow us, uh, this script, to act as an object that is networked. And we'll have the API up here. So now basically all we need to do is check if we are not is local player. So if if is local player is equal to false. So if we are not the uh, player uh, or if, if this object isn't controlled by the system, well, then we want to go ahead and disable all of these components. So we'll just loop through that ar array. So we'll say uh, for int i equals zero i is less than components to disable dot length i plus plus and then we want to say components to disable dot enabled whoops dot enabled uh, whoops we want to take the ith and set that equal to false so um, basically what we're doing here is we're saying in the start method when the player is spawned we want to check if we are controlling the player and if not well then we want to disable all of these components so um, we basically loop through the list and set uh, the uh, the uh, component that we're currently looking at enabled state to false cool so that's basically all uh, we need to do uh, in uh, scripting here. Uh, we could also start uh, disabling the camera, but let's do that in a sec. So let's minimize that. And uh, you can say that there's a warning here uh, saying that it will never be assigned to, and that's because we need to mark this as a serialized field. So that will allow us to access it in the inspector here and assign stuff to it. So now the player setup when uh, multi object editing is not supported. There we go. So that just needed to update. You can see that we have this network channel and network send interval information and that comes when deriving from network behavior. That can just be ignored. But we also have this array. And let's just increase the size on this. We want to disable a bunch of things. So if we are not controlling uh, this object, well then we don't want to have a motor and we don't want to have a controller and we do not want to have some kind of camera 
or uh, so we want to disable the camera component or an audio listener. So those are the components that we need to disable. But these components sit on another object. So we need some kind of way of dragging them in here. And for the camera, that's pretty simple. You can simply drag uh, the object in here or add him to uh, back into the scene and then uh, browse here and simply drag the camera in. And that will uh, simply drag the first component that sits on the object into the slot. But how do we access the audio listener? Well, that's actually pretty simple. We can go ahead and lock this inspector. So now that we set, uh, select another object, it's just going to stay on that object. And then we can create a new in inspector. So we hit Add Tab, Inspector. And uh, let's just drag it over here. And uh, that is going to change unless you log it. So now we can go on the camera here and we can take the audio listener and drag it in there. So you can just keep the inspector here or you can just uh, close it here. I don't think we're going to be needing it again in this tutorial. And then we can unlock this. So uh, now that we have these components uh, uh, to uh, disable added, uh, we can hit apply and we can uh, delete the player and uh, we can try this out. But I assure you this should be working. Uh, so let's just go ahead and add some functionality for disabling this scene camera. Well, basically, when do we want to disable the scene camera? Well, we only want to disable the camera if we are the local player. So uh, we don't want to uh, disable or enable the camera each time another player joins. We want to disable this local camera uh, when we join. So therefore, we can simply add an else statement here where we disable the camera. And because we marked it as a main camera, we, remember we added the tag there, we can simply say uh, camera.main.gameObject.setActive and set this to false. Uh, so that that's all we need to do. And uh, in the future, we're not going to be doing this under the player setup because the camera, uh, the scene camera doesn't really have anything to do with the player. But for now, we can just add this functionality here. Um, so that's basically all we have to do. Uh, but we also have to re-enable it once we disconnect. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, let's make a reference to this camera first of all. So let's make a camera variable here and that's just going to be private. And let's call this uh, seam camera. And then uh, here in the start, we'll uh, set, whoops, we'll, okay, I'm just going to write this again. We'll set scene camera equal to camera.main. And then down here, we'll say that if scene camera so if it's actually found a camera it's not equal it's not going to be equal to null and then we can simply say scene camera dot game object dot set active and then we can disable it so this will make sure that even though it doesn't find the camera we don't get any errors and then if we want to re-enable this we can use the handy function provided by unity uh, called on disable and this is also called when the object is destroyed. And in here we can simply say that if scene camera is not equal to null, well then we want to say scene camera dot game object dot set active and then true. So then we enable uh, the object again. And uh, this of course uses uh, set active. We could also just enable the component, uh, which might be something that we want to do, but on enabling and disabling the whole object, we don't need to do anything with the uh, audio listener. So uh, this is going to work just fine. So uh, that was all for the player setup script. Now let's save this and build this and building the player here. And by the way, the shortcut that I'm using is a control B. Let's hit play on this and uh, play in the game. And let's select host and select client. And we need to turn here. You can see now that we are not getting any errors in the console. And if we inspect in the hierarchy here, the scene camera is disabled. And uh, the player that we own has both its player motor and the player controller and its camera. But the other player here doesn't have any of these components enabled. 
So this means that when we now move in the game, we are the only one moving. However, it still doesn't update. So we need some kind of way of sending this information over the network. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the next video. So that was basically all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it a lot and were able to follow along with the concepts. Uh, if not, you're going to get the hang of this. Uh, don't worry. Um, networking is very different from other kinds of uh, programming and can be pretty hard to uh, get a grasp on because you have to kind of think of so many different players connecting and interacting with each other. So I hope that this made some kind of sense. And uh, if you couldn't get the programming side to work, of course, check out the uh, GitHub page. Uh, it's called Multiplayer FPS Tutorial, and there should be a link in the description. And if you enjoyed this series a lot and want to support me, of course, you can go to brackish.com slash donate and um, yeah, make a donation. It helps out a lot. So I hope to go full time in the near future. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that helps me do that. So thanks a lot for watching this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.